Hey guys, I've been getting a lot of requests for how I make my tarps. You've probably seen my tarps used in videos with Joe and myself, and then on my solo hikes. I love camping with a tarp, and it's a lot of fun. Over the past couple of years, I've made approximately about five or six different tarps myself, and today I'll go over how to make a tarp yourself. The tarp I'm going to be making today is going to be a lightweight, kind of emergency shelter, day hiking tarp. I make this for two reasons. One, if I'm out on a day hike and I want something that's really highly visible and easy to see, I'm making this out of some really bright orange silk nylon. And secondly, it could be used as a shelter in the case of a rain shower, snow shower, uh, or if I need some sunshade. I am not a sewing expert. Everything I've learned has been through trial and error, some help from my mom, and a bunch of YouTube videos. So I'm going to assume for this video that you have at least a basic knowledge of some sewing, but I'll try to make this as basic and simple as possible. For a sewing machine, I use the Singer Heavy Duty 4423. I've been using it for years and it works great. You can typically find it online between $150 and $200. For this project, I'm also using a walking foot. It helps to move the slippy sill nylon along. It's not required, but it is helpful. As for tools, you'll need a lighter, a pair of scissors, a tape measure, and a ruler. For this project, you'll need some raw silk nylon fabric, some one inch gross grain for reinforcing the edges of the project, one inch nylon webbing for tie outs, or alternatively, you could use 550 cord. And I also use polyester Gutterman Mara 70 thread, which is very strong. For my projects over the years, I've used three main websites. First is called DIY Gear Supply, second is called Ripstop by the Roll. And third, it's called Dutchware. I've had great success with all the websites and their products are all high quality. For this particular product, I ordered three yards of silk nylon from dutchwaregear.com. Ordered it in blaze orange. If you look down at the item description, you'll see that it is 58 to 59 inches wide uh, and weighs in between 1.3 and 1.4 ounces per yard. So for a strip that is 58 inches wide and three, three feet long, for one yard, it's going to weigh somewhere between 1.3 and 1.4 ounces. So now on to design and layout. Now that you know what websites to buy the material out, you got to kind of figure out what you want to order. For the tarp I'm making today, I ordered three yards and it's approximately 58 or 60 inches wide. So that's going to give me about a 5 by 9 tarp. If you wanted to make something that's more rectangular, like in the past I've made a 9 by 9 tarp or even a 10 by 10 tarp, you're going to have to use more material, cut it in half, and then take the two pieces and put them together with a center seam, which I'll show how to do the center seam in a later video. When you're doing the design and layout, you got to subtract a little bit for your hemming. So typically when I hem this one, the fabric I think is 60 inches wide by 3 yards long. It's going to be a little bit shorter on all sides because I'm going to hem around it. So I'll lose about an inch on the side hem. If I'm taking two pieces and putting it together, then I'm probably going to lose about an inch and a half, maybe two, to the overlapping seam in the middle. So just something to take, a, take into account depending on how big you want your tarp and then how big the fabric is that you're ordering. Typically fabric ranges uh, anywhere between 56 to maybe 62 inches wide. Uh, and then sometimes I'll have the salvage end included in that and sometimes it won't. You just got to pay attention to the item description and figure out what size of tarp you want to have. You want to check your settings before you get started. Turn it to a straight stitch, check the length, then the width, and the tension of your sewing machine. Every machine's a little bit different. You may need to check your owner's manual to see which works best for you. Once you get all these dialed in, you'll want to make sure to test it out on a scrap piece of fabric. I always try to order a little bit of extra fabric when I'm setting up a project so I have some to make a stuff sack or so I can do a test. To start the project out you'll double roll the edge under and then make a forward stitch going forward a few revolutions and then a backward stitch and then forward again. This forward then backwards and then forward again is going to be at the beginning and end of every single seam. Test it out on the scrap, see how it works. If it looks good, then move on to the full project. The first step is to sew the perimeter of the tarp. You want to double fold the fabric under on one side and then begin at, on an edge. Stitching forward, then backwards, and then forwards for the whole seam. For me, it tends to work best if I work in six inch to one foot increments at a time. 
I find that this material is very challenging to work with as you can't crease it, it's hard to pen, you can't iron it, it's much different than any material you've worked with before if you've used cotton. So you'll see here I'm working forward about five or six inches at a time and then stopping, repositioning, rolling, rolling the edge under, and then moving forward again. This process is repeated over and over again as you work your way down the seam. Let's speed things up a little bit. Once you get towards the end of your seam, you want to go all the way to the end. Once you've reached that, hit backwards, stitch back a couple of stitches, and then forwards again, one or two more stitches. This will seal off the edge. This process is then repeated three more times for all the other edges. This is, take your time, go slow. This is the boring, hard, and tedious part of this project. Once the perimeter is sewn, we need to make some reinforcements for our tie-outs. I use one inch grass grain cut to approximately two and a half inches. For the, each corner, you'll need two pieces, and for any tie-outs along the length of the hem, you'll need one piece. Make sure to seal the edges by burning it with a lighter. This will prevent the edges from fraying. At this point in time, you could also detach your walking foot and put back the normal single stitch foot. This is a pretty simple process here. You're just going to, in each corner, sew two pieces of this cross grin, and you're going to sew it in a square fashion. Again, stitching forwards, then backwards, and then forwards again, always finishing off your seam. This middle tie-out I'm making now is on the short edge, right in the middle of the tarp. I'm going to use this tie-out for either attaching a line that then goes to a tree or putting a hiking pole into this tie out so I can make an A-frame. You can add as many of these tie outs as you want. For this tarp I'm trying to be lightweight, make it basic and easy. The two main configurations I'm going to use is either going to be an A-frame tarp or I'm just going to lay it flat. Once all the reinforcements are sewn I'm going to cut some one inch webbing. You could alternatively use paracord if you want to. The webbing's a little bit stronger. I'm cutting it at a five inch length and then burning the edges. After I burn the edges of the loop, I always stitch about two inches in the middle. This just makes for a nicer looking loop. Next up is to attach the loops. I just do a simple straight back and forward. I start stitching as close as I possibly can to the edge and do about four or five passes. Uh, this has proven to be more than enough reinforcement. And then I do another final pass at the very edge of the tie out towards the back of it, just to keep it from flopping around. And here's what the final product looks like on an edge. And here's the final tie out in the middle of the tarp. So that's it, that's how you make a tarp. It came out to about 8.3 ounces and it's super compressible. I made this stuff sack a little bit oversized so you can easily fit the tarp inside of it and wedge it into your backpack for day hikes. This video is the first in a series I'm gonna do on tarps. The next video I'll do is gonna be part two of this called the advanced techniques where I'm going to go over how do you make a bigger tarp. So how do you take two pieces of fabric and fuse it together? Uh, how do you seal all the seams then because you're gonna have a seam in the middle? How do you seal that or at least how do I do it? And then some other tie outs that aren't just on the perimeter. How do we put tie outs inside the middle of the tarp if you want to pull out the edges? The next video in this series will be all about guy lines and knots. So how do I set up my guy lines and knot knots on a group shelter versus a small overnight uh, tarp and everything in between.
The final video in the series will be called Stories from the Tarp. That's when I will sh go over some old photos and video of camping trips in the past and talk about some of the memorable moments I've had while out camping while using a tarp. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and stay tuned for part two.